Uh, so let's kick this off. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Lawrence, and I'm the general manager of North America for Grayling Growth, a global leader in digital, private market data, intel, and insight. Uh, as always, our platform, the Health Tech Alpha platform, is the world's leading platform di for digital health, private market data, intel, and insight used by major leading, major and leading pharmacos, health insurers, uh, health systems, consulting companies, medical device companies, and so on and so forth. Uh, the platform has more digital health ventures than any other platform, approximately 16,000 digital health ventures with over 300 million data points and more data on each individual venture than any other platform. It also has best-in-class taxonomy and tagging and better search results than even Google, uh, enabling our users to save thousands of hours in research time. And all of this is backed by our unmatched team of digital health experts. Uh, the platform powers our Fortune 500 advisory work and our sought-after sought thematic reports, uh, including this briefing we will be speaking about today. Uh, you can see all of our research and reports on our website, and I will load that up in the chat as we begin here today. Uh, today's uh, analyst briefing is uh, on digital health funding strength, and I have, I have the pleasure of having with me today Julian DeSaloberry, uh, CEO and founder of Galen Growth, and Sarah Schmackenberg, Schmackenberg, excuse me, uh, head of data and analytics for uh, Galen Growth. Uh, please introduce yourselves and, uh, and add any other introduction for yourselves and uh, say hello. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Um, I would add one thing, if I may, and that is we love your questions. They help us understand how you're Absolutely. thinking about this, what you've interpreted from the data you have seen so far. Uh, tell us anything you disagree with um, as a question or as a statement. It's up to you. Um, Howard kindly told me that chat's disabled. Just use the question and answer yeah. function to share any information with us. Um, but, um, yeah, we'd love to hear your questions so you can help us help you with our answers. Um, so funding strength, why are we at Galen Growth, um, you know, focusing on funding strength? Um, because this is something we've been looking at for some time now. It's just set for, of course, most of 2021. It was almost, um, you know, a single separate story, which is everything is uh, on the way up and, um, you know, we saw 55 billion venture capital dollars deployed the shot across the globe. And that's just venture capital dollars that excludes all the other type of deal activity that went on. Um, basically it seemed that practically any digital health venture with a great story could actually raise funding. Um, and of course that on the back of COVID, um, where of course COVID demonstrated the limitations of a lot of health systems and, and how digital health enables some of these limitations to be overcome. Um, and so I guess you could technically call it a COVID dividend, um, along with being able to work from home. <clears throat> so, um, leaving all that aside, so we, we saw that. 2021 land where it ended and then towards the end, 20, the end of 2021 we saw quantitative easing uh coming to an end <clears throat> that is the government stopped buying all of the various assets of uh, various banks and other organizations and pumping money into the economy in order to keep it sort of afloat and, and, and growing despite the restrictions of COVID. and we ended 2022 with interest rates on their way up in order to count of inflation driven by all of this cash in the system. We saw geopolitical um, turbulence uh, kick in with, of course, the Ukraine conflict, or more specifically, Russia invading Ukraine. And of course, all of that um, culminating into economic uncertainty. Um, and of course, that just added yet another death nail into the IPO coffin. Um, I exaggerate slightly, but uh, certainly it's now been a good two years since any IPOs have occurred in digital health. And from everything I am hearing and all the conversations I'm holding with investors and, uh, and, and digital health ventures, it won't be much before 2025 before we see much IPO returning to market. So uh, we need to be patient, guys. But what does that mean? When the IPO machine is stuck, it means that the VC sausage machine is also stuck because there's no exit on the right hand side, which means that there is 
a knock-on effect all the way back up the venture capital sausage machine or conveyor belt or whatever other term conjures up that notion of seed stage all the way through to IPO as underwritten by various venture capital firms. And so we came to the end of 2022 thinking, cracky, that was a hell of a ride. What's 23 got in stove for us? And so we entered 2023, we're thinking, well, we'll probably get more of 22. And guess what? Then we had Silicon Valley Bank decide to collapse on us for various reasons. Um, and Silicon Valley Bank was in itself a reasonable, prolific um, investor in digital health, as well as being the bank of uh, many a digital health venture, as well as being the bank of many of a digital health investor. Um, and then we saw some of the consequences of that, and that is, for example, Pair Therapeutics, a well-known DTX, essentially declaring bankruptcy, the US style of bankruptcy, so chapter 11. Um, but, you know, most people did not expect that. Digital therapeutics, Pair Therapeutics itself, if you look at the stats, seem to be on a very strong path for a bright future. Um, so what did happen there? And that's a topic for a whole different analyst briefing. But we also saw as a result, LPs, that is the investors who sit behind venture capital firms and PE firms, withdrawing funds out of VCs in order to be able to place them into private equity firms and other financial uh, instruments in order to get a greater uh, return for their money. Uh, we also saw a number of LPs asking for VCs for cash returns. You know, you've had my cash for a number of years now. I'd like to see a return for it, particularly as you guys are starting to think hard about the future of some of your portfolio assets. Um, but that and it, all of those factors have created quite a bit of VC liquidity challenges. And we've seen and heard of many of these larger VCs um, running around the Middle East, particularly Saudi Arabia and UAE, uh, convincing sovereign wealth funds that it's a good idea to uh, feed some cash into their funds. Um, now, none of this has been particularly helped by valuations. Valuations have taken quite a hammering. It's difficult to put a finger, a precise finger on valuations. But suffice to say that the um, general conclusion is that late stage and growth stage deals, so from Series B onwards, um, have seen up to 50% cuts in valuation. And that early stage uh, ventures up to and including Series A have generally maintained valuations. Um, although let's see what um, the rest of 2023 has in store. Now, how did Q1 go when we bear in mind all of those factors that I've listed? Well, Q1 2023 saw total global funding in digital health close at $4.8 billion worldwide. That's barely one third of what was deployed in Q1 of 2021. So as you can see, it certainly took its toll on investment. And so we have, and we'll cover this a little later on in the presentation, we are seeing ventures cost cutting. We're seeing ventures restructuring, rethinking their business model. Uh, we're seeing a whole platform concept starting to take a little more shape. And of course, we're seeing quite a lot of M&A activity, venture to venture M&A activity, uh, which is something that we've reported on before. And I'm sure Sarah will touch on that briefly uh, in his presentation. But anyway, all of that context is really there to say and support why we are reporting on funding strength. Or you could look at the other way around on funding stress was in the digital health ecosystem. Because a typical funding round usually gives a venture, a digital venture, about 18 months to two years of runway. So this is why we look at funding strength at really being the number of ventures that have raised funding in the last 18 months, because those that haven't are probably in for quite a bumpy ride going forwards. So that's what we're looking at today. That's what I want to give you a flavor of. And we'll talk about this a bit more going forwards, but we have to bear in mind when we look at the US market and we, when you look at the numbers, you'll see that the US market has done reasonably well versus other regions. We can't lose some sight of the fact that we're already seeing US debt ceiling negotiations between the parties as being, um, what's it called, robust if they actually land on a particular result, we shall see. And we know that the US general election proceedings 
will start as at Q4 of this year. So that is introducing a level of domestic turbulence or uncertainty that we haven't yet quantified in these numbers largely because these are retrospective. Um, I stopped there until, of course, we move to this slide that kindly has been already flashed up to give you something to look at, I guess, while I've been talking for the last few minutes. I appreciate your patience. So as you can see from this, we are looking at look, trying to assess the global digital health funding stress levels. In other words, <clears throat> what percentage of the total ecosystem has not raised in the last 18 months? How much of that ecosystem actually has not raised is a defining point of the stress level in the system. So if we look at global to give us context, um, our calculations, and Sarah will touch on the methodology we actually use, but our calculations tell us that some 38% of digital ventures across the globe have actually raised in the last 18 months, which places global in a medium to high stress level, where of course the bookends of our barometer are uh, that no one raised high stress at zero or that everyone raised uh, at very very low stress at 100 percent now we will never see the ecosystem achieve either of those bookmarks or bookends but you will certainly see that little black bubble moving uh, up and down and certainly we are getting growth have been watching this black bubble slowly moving up into the orange which is what triggered us to um generate this mini report and make sure that we have a conversation that is uh, sensible, uh, focused on what is facing digital health uh, and, and hopefully encourage appropriate actions from investors, digital health venture, CXOs, and of course their partners. Let me hand off to Sarah. Thank you, Julian. Um, so I'm going to help you guys get a little bit of information on how we created these numbers. And then we can take a look um, at, at the history and why, like Julian said, why now that we're creeping up into the orange, we are kind of raising an alarm and want to, want to inform. Okay, so as Julian mentioned, these what numbers you're looking at are the number of ventures that have raised funding in the, eight, in the last 18 months. These are rolling 18 months. Um, we took all the ventures in Health Tech Alpha, 14,000 ventures in Health Tech Alpha, right? We can, we can designate them by global, global region, that's easy. And then for each region, look at how many, what percentage of those ventures have raised or have not raised. So we're not talking about a master's thesis here. This is pretty, um, pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, we did say, okay, it's a bit unfair. Some ventures just never publicize venture funding or they're bootstrapped, right? We wanna, we did take those out of the analysis because it, it, it throws the analysis off. It's a bit unfair because those, if we haven't heard about them fund, raising funding, we never will. So we took those out of the equation and then just looked at the ventures that have um, announced a funding round since um, 2012. Okay, so that's what we did. These are the numbers you see. Um, global average North America is at the, Nearly half of the ventures have raised funding in the last 18 months. So there, half the ecosystem is going to sit pretty comfortably. Europe is on medium high because they're they're reaching into what do we have? About 64% haven't raised funding. And then Asia Pacific is also medium high because 70% haven't raised funding in the last 18 months. As mentioned, this is a rolling average. So going into looking at the last three quarters. Right. Um, right now we're in, in Q1 2023. So those are the numbers um, you saw on the previous slide. Or these are, sorry, yeah, pretty much these are the numbers you saw in the last slide. If we look back one quarter ago, the year end 2022, things didn't look so bad. Q3 is when we started this analysis, right? In Q3 2022, North America was still more than half the ventures had raised. But as you see, as you go down quarter for quarter, that number is steadily decreasing the number that have raised. And that's where then we're raising an alarm and saying, if this trend continues, there are going to be a whole lot of ventures in trouble, which Julie mentioned, there, if I'm, I'm the optimist, right, in the team, I look at the bright side, you know, <laughs> you're going to have some sort of consolidate, industry, industry consolidation going on, 
which is going to solve one of the biggest pain points in digital health, which is the point solutions, right? You have so many point solutions, they're scattered everywhere. We have, once we have a bit of consolidation, it might make things actually better for the patient. So pluses and minuses, look at it the way you want, but this is what the numbers are showing and the trend is going in a very um, difficult direction at the moment. What do you think, Julian? Uh, is this only affecting digital health or is we seeing this across the board? Um, well, I think we're seeing this across the board. Everything I'm reading certainly says that you know, every tech vertical is, is taking um, a, an impact, a hammering, let's say, from, from funding, apart from probably chat GPT and its applications, <laughs> which seems so you know, generative AI applications seems to be now the darling of, um, of VC and the media. Uh, so leaving aside that phenomena, uh, yes, we're seeing the same downward trend in valuations and a downward trend in a uh, new funding being deployed um pretty much irrespective of the tech vertical yeah that's fine uh, um you talked a little bit about silicon valley bank so anyone who are interested go check out silicon valley bank um portfolio in health tech alpha right then you see how deep they really were into digital health which was quite impressive what i want to do is go into in particular in the north talking about North America here, let's go into the North America funding strength, um, a bit more into, into the details that we were talking about. Um, the previous numbers that I've shown are the volume weighted average. That's the average across all um, funding stages, right, for all the ventures in North America. If you go into those, if you break those funding stages down into early stage and series A, growth stage and late stage ventures, you do see that um, the late stage ventures, a greater percentage has raised funding. And this is the trend that we see across the globe, right? Whereas the early stage um, and series A ventures, they're, they're suffering a bit more. Okay, so, so this is a general trend. You can look at the other slides that you see across the board. Um, and um, it's, of course, the, the trend is getting um, more severe, right? If we look at the last 12 months, then, then you really see the numbers going down. So, so that's what um, we're concerned about. From here, unless you guys have any objections, I'm gonna jump then into Health Tech Alpha and show you a little bit about um, how you get these numbers. Then if you, if you can jump into the platform, let me get out of here, um, jump into the platform, into Health Tech Alpha. And um, what I'm gonna do is go into our funding transactions, right? Usually, um, if you guys have been on other webinars, we jump into this platform so we can show up, you know, the depth of data we have, the clinical trials, the regulatory, you know, the, pro the depth of the profiles we have on each venture. Um, today, we're really going to be focusing on, on the funding. And what, um, what we can do is, I've already filtered for North America in our, our funding transactions tables. So this is all the funding that's happened, um, 8,360 deals just within North America. And what we can do is look at you know, what's happened, how has that changed if I, if I look at just the past 12 months, right? And you see what you're gonna, what we have is that in just the past 12 months, we've had 773 deals um, in digital health, right? So if you reduce that then to the last six months, you really start to see um, those numbers uh, kind of nose diving, right? From 773, um, Rather than, uh, well, you do get you did just about half of that because you have all the year-end investments that come in. Um, so, so that's how you can find then who's raised funding over the past um, six, 12, 18 months, whatever it is that's interesting to you. Um, now, um, jumping into one of these particular ventures, um, let's try this one and let's see then I can show you how we look at, because Gala Growth focuses on digital health and digital health only, we can get a lot closer into what does the, um, what does this venture look like? Not only what is their strength, financial strength, which is proprietary analytics, something that we analyze and, and help our users um, to understand the venture, but we can go into um, this particular diabetes venture, right? And understand their funding rounds, and then look at their ecosystem, right? Let's look at their peers, and the box of MISCO plot shows you their 
peer group, right? Other ventures that are in similar, th similar therapeutic areas, similar, that have similar products. And you can see then very quickly for the Series B in their peer group, um, the peer group raised a median of 20 million um, and they raised 22 million. So they're really close to the median of their peer group, which considering the fact that they raised their Series B only this month, um, if they're hitting mean, which is really good because most funding deals at this point in May or April, March, we're seeing that, that reduction in valuation, right? So, so they're hitting almost, they're hitting just north of median. They're doing a good job. Um, we can go particularly into the Series B funding round and, and see um, more information about, that's again, that box and whisker chart to help you understand how they're doing compared to the peer group. We can we understand then any information about the funding round, who the investors investors were, right? The funding velocity, and that's how much is the um, the funding amount changing from from um, round to round, and then as well, when did they? Um, how long did it take for them to raise funding? This particular venture um, is has been raising several um, funding rounds back to back, so it took them two months to raise the round. Um, is not quite typical. Typically, you would see then a venture taking, you know, 18 months to two years, um, like, like Julian said. But as you can see, they've done a series of, of debt financing rounds um, in preparation for their for their Series B rounds. Um, if we go into, let's see, if we try and find one that has a bit of a later stage, then you can see as the as the stages are building. Uh, spring health would have been good. Um, Cortica, I don't know, but you can see that that building of funding, right, in a particular venture um, over the past over the past years. Right. Again, it's very useful to understand how the venture is doing compared to their peer group. Back to you, Julian. If you have any questions, or have we gotten any questions from our Participants, I don't see anything in the uh, the Q and A. Does anyone want to pipe uh, up? Not, there's no questions at the moment, Sarah. Anybody? Doesn't look like it. Great. And then uh, that must be clear. Again, I can't emphasize more. Um, Health Tech Alpha is a great tool to go in and understand um, your particular field of, of ventures, you can filter here for, um, for example, digital therapeutics um, in the primary category, and then understand right what the what the funding looks like in digital therapeutics over the past um, 18 months. And then you get a feel for, you know, how are those ventures really doing? How many funding rounds do they have? Um, now you see only 17 funding rounds, but we're just looking at those, a six month period here. Great, then let's go back and- Yes, um, I... Go ahead, Julie. No, no, I was saying thanks to Sarah. Hey, here's a question, oh, you, Matthew. So, um, as I said, I'll ask the obvious question of the month, namely, can I point some of AI at this data and allow it to do some <laughs> slicing, I think, and dicing? Or would I have to download it and then have an AI system operate on that? I see, I'm not sure what he means by some AI. It's a bit vague, the usual AI black box, Matthew. Uh, but Sarah, leaving aside the AI bit, which of course we've got pretty much lots of already in the system, do you want to talk quickly talk about slicing and dicing and some of the analysis you can do, particularly yeah. our signals data? Yeah, we, we, uh, we've done that AI for you. Don't worry. Um, that's that's where um, we were talking about in particular. Now I've lost. Oh, I because we're in digital therapeutics. Um, the um, in order to compare this particular venture to the peer group, um, we look at peer groups through through a measure of similarity, and and that AI is built into our um, our med our methodology of tagging ventures. Right, we do have a learning system that um, tags uses meta tagging for each of the ventures, understands their profile and any regulatory, any publications they have, right? Collects meta tag, meta, 
the meta tags, throws them into the data lake and does the um and, and performs the magic there in the data lake so that you can get the uh, the similar ventures and create the ecosystem around that particular venture. Um, so that's the ecosystem uh, adjustment that we have on our um on the analytics, right? The money score here, what we do is we do ecosystem adjust. So you can compare ventures across the globe and through therapeutic areas and across different categories, right? And compare them, um, the, the score is one-to-one -one on those in order to allow you to understand what's really going on with that particular venture. And that showed you before this box of whisker plots so you understand how they're doing compared to their peers. Okay. We have a couple of questions coming. Well, Matthew's qualified, Matthew is qualified his question, thing. Lawrence. Okay, and uh, Howard. No, no, Matthew has qualified his question further. So, oh, tell me what companies got their funding from X and Y as flat or up rounds in the last Z months in North America. List the named investor partners and link to the press releases. A common plain language query, inquiry like that. Query is what he's uh, talking about. Right. Um, I haven't tested our our search bar. We have um, what we have is a Google like search. Um, so not going to the extent of the plain language, but it is um, saying which um, which invest or where you say who invested in. Um, venture X or Y, you should be able to do in our in our search bar. Um, but this is, like I said, very much like a Google search, so you should be able to treat it with natural NLP, just like Google. Um, otherwise, you can you can just go to the investors tab, click on the two investors that you're interested in, and very quickly see what investments they've made <clears throat> over the and and filter over the last. Um, say what investments has Costa made um, over the last whatever um, time frame that you would like and, and get to that information pretty quickly within the last one. Okay. And we have another question from Howard with a, mm -hmm. with a, with a drop in IPOs. Is there a measure to commensurate uh, drop or change in valuation? It's a tricky one, that one. I'll take that one, if I may. Uh, tricky one, Howard, largely because, of course, as you know, a lot of valuations are not disclosed in any official capacity. So you're doing calculations and mark-to-market equivalents. Um, and, of course, what we've seen is a fair amount of convertible note debt financing coming in so as to avoid the annoying question of valuation in, in rounds. But you are correct. A lot of rounds that have happened the last few months let's say 12, have been flat rounds, or down rounds. Um, so our best guess is that the late stage deals, so series, correct me if I'm wrong here, Sarah, but DOE onwards, um, in terms of stage definition, uh, have seen corrections of up to 50% in valuation. Uh, growth stage, so the B, C, and D, we've seen corrections of then somewhere between the 10 and 20%. I'm giving you a range there. And at the early stage, it's very variable. But because we've seen quite a lot of moving upstream of investors who are trying to still stay in the game, but without taking quite as much risk in terms of the size of the ticket they're putting in, we are seeing some up rounds and some flat rounds in the early stage side of things. So a bit of a long answer to your question, but hopefully one that gives you uh, a slightly more colorful picture as to how valuations are performing. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Oh, we got another question Matthew. from Matthew. Uh, don't mean to be difficult. <laughs> is, Go for it. This is where we are going in terms of uh, plain language queries with qualifiers to reduce research time to get to a pl pl uh, plain, uh, excuse me, language business question. Uh, just ask, asking if we, if we can use our credits and drive right 
onto the data to get these kinds of responses. So I guess what the question is, is uh, can it's, they use the AI on top of this to actually? Well, so it's already a question. I think Matthew's yeah. busy promoting his services, which is very kind of him. Uh, I think the short answer is that we're all aware of the merits of uh, of AI and its capability these days of uh, of taking masses of data and, and churning out responses to uh, users uh, who are using um, plain question types rather than more Boolean type of questions. Uh, we're on, we're certainly looking at it very closely. We're building accordingly, uh, but Matthew, we're happy to. Um, have um, a conversation offline, uh, but just to reassure you that we're well aware of the advantages of AI and we are looking very closely how we continue to add to our own existing AI capability to meet the needs of our clients um, from, uh, you know, generating easy answers to, to or easier ways of querying data uh, and getting the sort of answers that they're looking for in the language that they like to use themselves. Yeah, it's, Thanks, it's Matthew. Matthew. yeah, thank you, Matthew. And Matthew was asking if he could engage uh, one on top of our data is what he was asking. Uh, uh, yeah, the answer to no. that is yes. I mean, some of our clients are using APIs, for example. So they extract yep. data out of the platform through an API and then, you know, augment with their own data as well as use their own tools and, and uh, analytical tools over the top. So the, the short answer is, is yes, it's possible, Matthew. Okay. And thank you for that, Matthew. Any other questions? Don't be don't be shy. Come on. Okay. So I guess it's a, it's a wrap, Lawrence. It is a wrap. And I appreciate everybody's time today. Thank you again. Don't forget to check out the Health Tech Alpha platform. And don't forget to check out our research page. The Health Tech Alpha platform, again, is the global leader in private market data, intel, and insight. So check it out. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending today. Uh, and thank Julian and uh, Sarah for uh, joining me on this call. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Lawrence. Bye.